This video shows the NetBackup 5230 appliance and semantic storage shelf in a non-production environment. The units, in almost all cases, are either off or are fully unplugged from any external power in order to clearly show the installation procedures and other aspects of the units. The instructions in this video are current as of August 2014 and appliance software version 2.6.0.2. Please consult the manual for the latest updates and instructions to any of the procedures shown here, as well as additional best practices, instructions, and warnings about proper handling, safety requirements, and operational considerations before attempting any installation or maintenance task. In all situations, be sure to follow best practices when performing any kind of installation. A semantic storage shelf weighs approximately 72 pounds. You should always use appropriate safety practices, techniques, and tools when handling these units. At least two technicians or a mechanical lift are required to lift or install the semantic storage shelf. When unpacking the units, be sure to keep all packaging for the units until after the installation has been successfully completed, just in case the unit needs to be reboxed for any reason. Please ensure the technicians handling the devices are ESD compliant. ESD preventative clothes, wrist straps, and gloves prevent static electricity from damaging the units. Semantic recommends that you wear ESD preventative clothes if they are available. If they are not available, wear a protective grounded wrist strap. If a wrist strap is not available, wear protective gloves at a minimum. If you wear ESD preventative clothes, be sure to fasten the buttons. If you wear an ESD preventative wrist strap, first stretch your hand through the ESD preventative wrist strap band and then fasten the band snugly around your wrist so that it is in full contact with your skin. The wrist strap will have a plug or metal clip at the end. If you have a wrist strap with a plug at the end, insert the plug into an ESD jack on the workbench. If you have a wrist strap with a metal clip at the end, as shown here, Attach the metal clip to an unpainted metal surface on the unit you're working on or on the equipment rack cabinet. In this video we will be covering the unpacking and installation of the 5230 appliance and two semantic storage shelves, including how to connect the semantic storage shelves to the 5230 appliance and how to configure the IPMI interface in order to allow remote access to the 5230 appliance. We will begin by unpacking the hardware. Here you see a semantic 5230 appliance and two semantic storage shelves. The 5230 appliance is normally shipped stacked on top of one or more semantic storage shelves and then shrink wrapped at the factory. After removing the shrink wrap you should be able to identify each unit by referencing the label attached to each container. Before unpacking the units check that the containers are intact and undamaged. If they appear to be intact, you can proceed to unpack the units. We will begin by unpacking the semantic storage shelf. Place the 5230 appliance container off to the side and place the semantic storage shelf somewhere that allows you to easily unpack the container. Remember, due to the weight of the semantic storage shelf, two technicians are required for all handling, lifting, and installation of the unit. The semantic storage shelf containers are not designed to be cut open like a traditional box. They are designed with a lid that lifts up. Two white plastic inserts on either end of the container hold the lid in place. Simply remove all four inserts from the container and the lid will lift up with ease. You can now remove the contents from the container. Place the hardware components on the work surface as you remove them. The bottom portion of the semantic storage shelf container has sides that are held in place with four pieces of velcro on each end. Simply unfasten the velcro on both ends and the sides of the container will lay down flat. Using two technicians or a mechanical lift, lift the semantic storage shelf out of the container. Remove the protective plastic bag and place the unit on a sturdy work surface. A factory prepared semantic storage shelf has protective film covering the top, bottom, and sides. 
This film needs to be removed or the unit will not fit properly with the 5230 appliance. We will now unpack the 5230 appliance. Unlike the semantic storage shelf container, the 5230 appliance container is not held together with plastic inserts or Velcro. It opens like a traditional shipping box. Simply cut the top of the box open and remove the contents from the container, placing the hardware components on a work surface as you remove them. While the 5230 appliance is not as heavy as the semantic storage shelf, it is still recommended that two technicians handle the unit any time lifting is required, and especially when installing the unit, as it can be awkward for one operator to properly place the unit in the mounting rails. For now, lift the 5230 appliance out of the container, remove the protective plastic bag, and place the unit on a sturdy work surface. Like the semantic storage shelf, the 5230 appliance also has a protective film covering the top, bottom, and sides. This film needs to be removed or the unit will not fit properly with the semantic storage shelf. This is also a good time to take a photo of, or write down, the serial number of the 5230 appliance. After the unit has been installed in a production environment, access to the serial number may be difficult. Once you have removed all items from the shipping containers, you should perform a quick inventory assessment to ensure that all items were included and are available for the installation. The 5230 appliance container should include the following items. The net backup appliance, mounting rails, M5 snap-in cage nuts and screw locks, two kinds of power cords, the semantic 5230 bezel, and a portfolio containing license information, documentation, and a USB flash drive. The USB flash drive is required to re-image the appliance if this is deemed necessary in the future. The process of re-imaging an appliance is usually done with the help of a member of the semantic technical support staff. If one or more semantic storage shelves are included with the shipment, each storage shelf container should include the following items the semantic storage shelf, mounting rails, M5 snap-in cage nuts and screw locks, two kinds of power cords, serial cables, and SAS cables. In this section we will cover the proper installation of the 5230 appliance and two semantic storage shelves. The 5230 appliance can be configured as a standalone installation or with one to four semantic storage shelves. In our example, we'll show the installation of a 5230 appliance with two semantic storage shelves. The order of installation is important. We will cover the installation in detail based on the following order. First, we will determine the installation location in the equipment rack to ensure available space and proper weight distribution. Once this has been done, we can install the semantic storage shelf by first installing the mounting rails followed by the semantic storage shelf. The second semantic storage shelf will be the same, so we will not cover that. We will then install the 5230 appliance by first installing the mounting rails, and then the appliance. And then we will end the installation portion by connecting the SAS cables and then the power cables to the units. To prevent tipping, you should place the semantic storage shelves as low as possible in the equipment rack, with the 5230 appliance installed directly above. In some cases, you may have to install the 5230 appliance and the semantic storage shelves into adjacent equipment racks. In this case, make certain that the distance between the devices is not too long for the cables that connect them. The SAS cables that are provided with the semantic storage shelf are 1 meter in length. If the distance from the 5230 appliance to the semantic storage shelf exceeds 1 meter in length, the customer should provide their own cables as required to connect the devices. If you are installing the devices into an equipment rack that is already populated, you should check to determine if there is adequate space in the rack before you begin the installation procedure. The procedure shown in this video assumes you have a standard 19-inch equipment rack with square holes. The 5230 appliance is a 2U sized device that requires 6 holes in a standard 19 inch equipment rack with square holes. 
The Symantec storage shelf is a 3U size device that requires 9 holes and a standard 19 inch equipment rack with square holes. To determine the correct equipment rack location for both devices, take a look at the front of the rack. Note that each 1U space is numbered and has 3 square holes. You must be sure that you install the mounting rails within a designated 1U space. Take care that you do not install the mounting rails across two different U sections. Once we have determined the equipment rack location for all of our devices, we will begin with the installation of the lowest device in the rack, a semantic storage shelf. Start by locating the mounting rails and M5 snap-in cage nuts and screws that were included with the semantic storage shelf. The storage shelf ships with left and right mounting rails. These rails install in a standard 19-inch equipment rack. The front mounting plates of the mounting rails are marked front left and front right. Two-inch lips on the bottom of the mounting rails provide a ledge on which the semantic storage shelf sits. Extenders that are built into the mounting rails allows you to adjust the rails for the depth of the equipment rack. In addition to the left and right mounting rails, you will need the following items to complete the installation of a single semantic storage shelf. A 19-inch equipment rack with at least three consecutive U-spaces, six M5 snap-in cage nuts and cage nut screws, a number two Phillips screwdriver, and a flashlight if the lighting conditions are not optimal. To install the semantic storage shelf mounting rails, First, identify the 3U space on the equipment rack where the semantic storage shelf will be installed, and then identify the lowest 1U space that will contain the mounting rails. This space starts at the bottom of the 3U sections. Locate the M5 snap-in cage nuts. You will install one M5 snap-in cage nut in the center hole of the 1U section where the mounting rails will be installed. The M5 snap-in cage nuts are installed by snapping them into place, from the inside of the equipment rack towards the front of the rack. Install a cage nut on the opposite side as well as the back of the equipment rack. Make sure the cage nuts in all four places are in the center hole of the same 1U designation. Extend the mounting rails so that the outside mounting plates are flush with the equipment rack. Place the mounting rails in that 1U space so that the front and rear mounting plates are on the outside of the equipment rack and the holes line up with the M5 snap-in cage nuts you just installed. You can now insert the M5 cage nut screws and tighten, making sure not to over-tighten or strip the screws. When properly installed, the lips of the mounting rails will be on the inside of the equipment rack, at the bottom of each mounting rail. Verify that both mounting rails are secure, level, and at the same height. You should now insert two M5 snap-in cage nuts into the front center holes of the uppermost 1U space that the semantic storage shelf will occupy. Install these cage nuts the same way as the previous nuts, snapping them into place from the inside of the rack out. These will be used to secure the front of the semantic storage shelf to the equipment rack. With the mounting rails securely installed, you can now install the semantic storage shelf into the equipment rack. Using two people or a mechanical lift, Place the semantic storage shelf onto the lips of the mounting rails and slide the device along the mounting rails into the equipment rack so the screw holes align with the M5 snap-in cage nuts you just installed. With the semantic storage shelf pushed flush against the rack, insert the M5 cage nut screws into each mounting bracket hole from the front and tighten, making sure not to over-tighten or strip the screws. You have just completed the installation of one semantic storage shelf. Repeat the process for any additional storage shelves before installing the 5230 appliance. After installing all of the semantic storage shelves, you should be able to clearly identify where the 5230 appliance mounting rails should be installed. To install the 5230 appliance mounting rails, identify the 2U space in the equipment rack where the appliance will be installed. Remembering that the mounting rails are installed in the top U of the 2U space, and M5 snap-in cage nuts will be installed in the center hole of the lower U of the 2U space. Begin by installing the two M5 snap-in cage nuts into the front center holes of the lower U section where the 5230 appliance will be installed. 
be sure to snap them into place from the back of the equipment rack forward. These cage nuts will secure the 5230 appliance when it is fully installed into the equipment rack. Now locate the left and right mounting rails. The left mounting rail has an L designation on the inside front, and the right mounting rail has an R designation on the inside front. Locate the blue pegs at the front and back of each rail, and align these pegs so they fit properly into the bottom holes of the upper U section where the 5230 appliance will be installed. The metal tabs at the front and back of each rails fit into the top holes of that same U space. Make sure the mounting rails are level and that they occupy the same U space on both the left and right side. When installed properly, the left mounting rail will be mounted on the left side of the equipment rack, and the right mounting rail will be mounted on the right side of the equipment rack with the L and R designations facing away from the appliance, or towards the inside wall of the equipment rack. It is now time to install the 5230 appliance. Verify once again that the 5230 appliance mounting rails are properly installed and securely fastened. Pull out the left and right mounting rail extenders as far as they can easily and safely extend. The release button should click when the rails have fully extended. Use at least two people to lift or move the 5230 appliance. Although the appliance weighs less than the semantic storage shelf, it's awkward to get the appliance aligned into the mounting rails, so two people are recommended. Tilt the 5230 appliance down with the rear panel facing down and towards the rear of the equipment rack. Insert the two rear standoff pegs that extend from the side of the appliance into the mounting rail slots at the back of the rail extenders. Slowly lower the front of the appliance into the mounting rail slots at the front of the rail extenders. A peg in the middle and a peg at the front of the appliance will fit into these slots if you've aligned the appliance correctly with the mounting rails. Lift up on the mounting rail release buttons to unlock the rail extenders and push the appliance back into the equipment rack. Fasten the appliance to the equipment rack with two screws that are attached to the appliance. The 5230 appliance and the semantic storage shelves use the following types of cables, some of which are provided with each device, while some are optional depending on customer requirements. Cables that are shipped with the product include AC power cables for connecting each device to the main AC power source, SAS cables to connect the 5230 appliance to a semantic storage shelf or to connect one storage shelf to another storage shelf, Optional cables the customer must provide as needed include networking cables, fiber channel cables for client and device connections, a PS2 to USB adapter cable, and a KVM cable. It is now time to connect the SAS cables. If you purchased a 5230 appliance with a semantic storage shelf, a SAS RAID controller PCIe card is factory installed into slot 1 of the PCIe riser assembly 2. An authorized field technician can replace an existing card, or add a card if the card was not originally ordered. Customers are not permitted to perform these operations. SAS, or Serial Attached SCSI Cables, must be used to connect the 5230 appliance with one or more semantic storage shelves. Starting with Appliance Software version 2.6.0.2, the NetBackup 5230 appliance no longer requires a matched semantic storage shelf as the first connected expansion storage unit. It is now time to connect the SAS cables. The SAS cables will be connected from the 5230 appliance to the first semantic storage shelf directly below, and then from that storage shelf to the next storage shelf directly below, and so on until all devices have been connected. Begin by connecting a SAS cable to the SAS out port on the 5230 appliance to the SAS in port on the semantic storage shelf directly below the appliance. Do this for both ports. When more than one storage shelf is used, connect the SAS out ports on the upper shelf to the SAS in ports on the storage shelf directly below. Do not connect the SAS out ports of the final storage shelf to any device. With the SAS cables securely connected, it's time to plug in the AC power cables to each of the devices. 
Before connecting the appliance or storage shelves to any power source, the devices should be completely installed and all of the desired network cables should be connected. The net backup appliance and semantic storage shelves each have two power supply modules that are accessible on the rear panel of the device. Each module requires a separate AC power cable. Plug one end of a power cable to a power supply module and then plug the other end into a 120 volt power source. Do this for both power supply modules on each unit. This section shows you how to configure and enable the Remote Maintenance and Management port, also known as the IPMI port, on the Net Backup 5230 appliance. Some of the main uses of the IPMI are to manage a system remotely in the absence of an operating system, change the BIOS settings, power on, power off, or recycle the appliance. For situations where local access by monitor is not possible or preferred, like branch offices, remote data centers, or headless systems. To reduce the number of keyboards, monitors, mice, cabling, and other associated hardware. And to re-image the appliance using the IPMI interface. Semantic recommends that you configure the remote management port immediately after installation. An IPMI lets you monitor and manage your appliance from a remote location by using the ISM, or Integrated Storage Manager, or Semantic Remote Management Console. Once the operating system is restarted, the IPMI system exposes the management data and structures to the operating system. You can access the appliance using a KVM switch with a keyboard, monitor, and mouse, or you can access the appliance from a remote location using a laptop. Before configuring the IPMI system, verify the following configuration prerequisites. For each appliance for which you want to configure the IPMI, obtain the following information from your network administrator. An IP address to change the default static IP address of the remote management port, a subnet mask, and a gateway IP address to enable connectivity between your network computer and the appliance. Ensure that you have a dedicated network infrastructure. Open the required ports in your firewall. If a firewall exists between the appliance and the remote devices that manage an appliance, such as a laptop computer, open the ports listed here on your firewall. If you have a private internal network, remember to configure the settings accordingly. There are a number of checks that need to be performed after the hardware installation and cable connections are completed, but before the hardware is powered on. Before checking the hardware installation and cable connections, First confirm that all power is turned off to the NetBackup 5230 appliance and any connected semantic storage shelves to prevent personal injuries or device damage. Verify that the NetBackup 5230 appliance and the semantic storage shelves are placed securely in the equipment rack. Verify that the AC power cables for all devices are connected securely between the power supply modules and the main AC power. Communication with a NetBackup 5230 appliance can be accomplished through a direct attached console or through a PC connected to the ETH0 port. Starting with the NetBackup appliance release 2.6.0.2, the ETH0 or NIC1 port can be configured and used in a network for backup jobs. If the ETH0 port is used for backups, the IPMI remote management port must be configured so that you can access the 5230 appliance. The networking ports are accessed on the rear panel of the device. The IPMI remote management port is for use by semantic technical support staff or by approved field service technicians. If you are at the rear of the 5230 appliance, there are a number of communication ports that are available to the user. Located on the left while facing the rear of the 5230 appliance are four gigabit network communication ports that are all available for backup purposes starting with the NetBackup 2.6.0.2 release. You will need to connect these ports under the direction of the customer using standard network cables supplied by them. The IPMI remote management port is located to the right of the USB ports. The IPMI remote management port enables remote data gathering and monitoring of hardware status. 
The next step for a new installation is to configure IPMI access to the 5230 appliance. To do this, you must connect a monitor and keyboard to the 5230 appliance. The monitor port is reserved for a direct attached monitor. You will also have to connect a PS2 keyboard to one of the USB ports located on the rear panel. Once the keyboard and monitor are connected, power on the monitor and begin the power on sequence for the 5230 appliance and semantic storage shelves. The 5230 appliance and semantic storage shelves should be powered on in a specific order. If you have one or more semantic storage shelves, they must be powered on before powering on the 5230 appliance. In an ideal setup, you will have the 5230 appliance installed above any semantic storage shelves. The 5230 appliance will be connected with SAS cables to the semantic storage shelf directly below and that storage shelf will be connected with SAS cables to the closest storage shelf below it. Using the example here, the order in which you power on the devices will be from the bottom up, starting with the last semantic storage shelf in the chain. When powering on any of the devices, do not remove or handle any disks, cables, cords, or connectors. Otherwise, data may be lost and equipment may be damaged. Start by powering on the last semantic storage shelf in the SAS chain. You can power this unit on by pressing the two power switches located on the rear panel and wait for the device to boot up completely. Watch the front panel of the storage shelf and wait for all disks to initialize. When all of the lights on the unit stop blinking and are on steady and no faults exist, you may power on the next storage shelf in the chain each time waiting for the storage shelf to initialize before continuing on to the next storage shelf. When all storage shelves have been powered on, you may power on the 5230 appliance by pressing the power button located on the front panel. When powering on the 5230 appliance, make sure someone is at the attached keyboard and monitor. As the appliance boots, it will issue three beeps to signal that the BIOS prompt will be displayed soon. Do not enter any commands until you see the BIOS prompt. When the BIOS prompt appears, immediately press F2 on your keyboard to enter the BIOS setup screen. You may have to press F2 quickly, several times, in order to get the BIOS prompt. Please note, you only get a window of a few seconds to perform this task. If you miss the BIOS prompt window, the operating system will load and you will not be able to access the BIOS setup screen. If this happens, you will have to reboot the 5230 appliance and try again. Once the BIOS setup screen appears, use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate to the server management menu and then down to the BMC LAN configuration section so that it is highlighted. Once there, press the enter key on your keyboard. On the new screen that appears, navigate to the RMM4 LAN configuration section. Make sure the IP source option is set to static. Next, highlight and change the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway IP settings to the values provided by the customer. You will be asked to enter the user ID and password to confirm these settings. The default user ID is sysadmin, and the default user password is password, spelt with a capital letter P, the at symbol, lowercase letters SSW, the number 0, and the lowercase letters RD. Press F10 on your keyboard to save your configuration and exit the BIOS. In the confirmation message that appears, select Yes. The appliance is automatically restarted. Now that the IPMI tool is configured, you can use it to turn on and manage your appliance from a remote location. To access and use the IPMI web interface, open a supported Windows browser on your remote computer and enter the remote management port IP address that you assign to the appliance in the BIOS. The screen you see here will appear. Enter your login information. The default username is sysadmin, and the default user password is password, spelt with a capital letter P, the at symbol, lowercase letters SSW, the number zero, and lowercase letters RD. Click the Login button. The System Information section appears. This section shows general hardware information about the appliance. Once you have verified that you can access the RMM4 interface, 
you can select the Logout button to end your RMM4 session. This concludes the installation and IPMI configuration of the 5230 appliance and semantic storage shelf. Under the direction of the customer, you can now plug in any Ethernet cables and disconnect the monitor and keyboard from the system. As a best practice, you should clean up all of the packing materials and leave the data center in a clean state. Do not leave the data center without first confirming with the customer that the hardware is operational and ready to be configured.